Hello and welcome to Surf All Day A1A, my surfing channel, where I bring you along with me on my surfing adventures. Also started a new series recently called How to Surf Florida Waves. It's not just about maneuvers. All right. So today, by popular demand, I'm going to tell the complete story of the time that a friend of mine and I boarded a Cuban Cuban raft off the coast of Indian Atlantic, Florida. If you stay until the end, I will give you a special preview of coming events. Also, if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe to Surf All Day A1A. Lots of live streams, new content, all the time. Okay. So before we get too far into it, I think I will also show you this cool new intro. So here we are. <laughs> this is some footage that I was privileged to capture recently couple of brown pelicans cruising the shore during a summer morning. This is very similar to the morning which I will describe in this video. And all right, let's get started. So it was a summer morning in the 90s, and that was a time when there was a rather large Cuban exodus to Florida, and many rafts had been landing on the shores. In fact, so many that they, I remember seeing one news report, they were talking about what to do with the quantity of rafts that were washing up. And they had this one junkyard or whatever where they were putting them all, but they were big, heavy things and how to deal with all this significant stuff showing up on the on the shore was a problem. Well, anyhow, so it was in the news, and uh, I was at a popular surfing spot in Central Florida one evening, and one washed in, and a lot of the surfers that were at this spot boarded it, and they rode it into the, you know, in the waves even to the shore. Anyway, I was intrigued by that, and in a following morning, my friend and I went down for a dawn patrol very early, 6 a.m. ish, and small waves, but probably waist to stomach high type of typical summer waves and very glassy, barely blowing, just light offshore wind. And I saw on the horizon a, a little, like just very slowly moving, very slowly <laughs> moving um, line perpendicular to the to the horizon, but you could barely see it. With my 50-year-old eyes, I probably could not have seen it. But with my 22-year-old you know, eyes, 23-year-old eyes, I saw it and I started to focus on it, watch it. And then I told my friend and he started to watch it. And we made a decision at that point, which was to go out and take a look at it. With no other objective than that. There was nothing deeper than that, which was just a curiosity. And who knows what we would have encountered out there. We could have encountered people that were were hurt or we could have encountered any number of things. But we weren't even thinking that far. We just decided we're going to go check it out. Hey, Flipside Fishing, thank you for joining. Yeah, that was a strange time when all those, those Cuban rafts were washing up. And really, you know, one of many times, of course. And um, yeah, so anyhow... So we just started paddling for it and paddling and paddling. And I'll cut the long story short just to say we paddled for certainly over a mile, but there's no real way to know how far out other than we paddled probably all, all said and done close to over 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes out. And But we got to a certain point where we could see that it was a raft. <laughs> that was the... That was the um, a kiss of curiosity rekindled. And so we started to, you know, want to paddle towards it. And then at some point you're so far out when you decide to look backwards and the buildings are just little tiny things. And you realize we are so far out now. 
it is, we talked about it too. Like it's better to just go for it, get on it and kind of paddle it in right now because we also started to see some fish action and there are a lot of sharks in the summer in Florida. So there were sharks around certainly, but, um, we, we had paddled so far out that we eventually paddled right up to this thing. And what we found was two plastic, hard plastic pontoons that were connected to L metal that had been welded into a, into a rectangle. It was like a pontoon boat, essentially, but a, a sailboat almost. And it had a, like a little railing around it. And there was a bunch of stuff in it. Nobody was in it. I'll tell you what we found in it. And there was a long pole laying down on it and like it looked like sheets on top of it anyway by the time we got to that raft the water was popping and i mean there were fish everything was nervous for sure the sharks were there i mean you could feel it it felt like we were about to get tagged any minute and it, now that i fly drones i know when it's like that with that amount of bait and everything's freaking and jumping almost every time you fly over and see sharks and they're just actively tagging stuff in that scenario but anyway so we got into this into this sailboat this catamaran sailboat <laughs> with it was all rusty and so we we saw what was in there well there were a couple of shirts and uh there like a couple of old plaid shirts there was an inner tube that looked like it was filled with water so like the perfect water storage not able to get salty water storage method they had eggs a lot of hard what would look like hard boiled eggs some homemade, like what looked like sewn together, but with, you know, effective PFD devices. And it was all laid on top of the raft, just like somebody had left it there to swim to shore, which is immediately what we thought was like, oh, okay. Yeah, they got this raft close enough or got it to shore, hopped off, and then the offshore winds just gently pushed it a couple of miles offshore or whatever, where we saw it. So everybody was okay. Or the Coast Guard had intercepted it and taken everybody off. Anyway, so again, now we're so far out. What to do next? Realize that this craft also had a cup welded into the perfect sailing point on it. And realize that that pole laying across was the mast. And it was a perfectly rigged square, square rigger sailing setup, which I'm very comfortable with and understand. So I put the mast in the, I mean, I put the mast in the center cup hole thing. And it just like immediately filled up with air i just grabbed on the two ropes tied them on the sides and and realized as i look back at how we're going to steer this that it had rack and pinion steering that they had welded in just like a hobie cat two long fins that kind of you can both center down and they move at the same angle so connected to like a little stick it was perfect so we just turned that thing around and right about at that point the wind started to blow a little bit on shore we were out there for a little while by this point and we started to sail towards the shore, but we were pretty far out at that point. So, I mean, it was like a good, probably an hour to sail it to the shore. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so at some point we decided we were getting super sunburned. So we decided to put on the shirts that were, <laughs> in the <laughs> these dirty shirts that were in the, in the raft. So we have put them over ourselves. Well, we're sailing and sailing. And at the point where we're going, this is incredible. We're, this sailboat sails really well you know and uh my friend said hey look what is that what i think it is on the horizon and he points out and you could see the silhouette of a united states coast guard cutter <laughs> full speed towards our location and uh i said oh you know yeah i think i think uh this is about to the story's about to change here and then we noticed that a air force helicopter was cruising down the beach and went right over us with the guys looking out directly down at us yeah and then uh we decided to look towards the beach and realized oh yeah there were um probably like 50 to 100 people now gathered on the beach <laughs> and you could see you could see that they had um the the masts of their transmission antennas up like it was network news. And then you can say, oh, there's a fire truck. And it's, oh no. So just completely blindsided by that 
that that could even occur. None of it even occurred to us at all. Uh, so <laughs> the Coast Guard did pull up on us and there was uh, quite literally a person on a 50 caliber um, machine gun with it pointed directly at us and uh, speaking to us in Spanish. And um, <laughs> my friend, we we had no idea what to do other than to raise our hands, like, you know, we surrender. And my friend slowly reached over and grabbed his surfboard, which was a Spectrum surfboard. And he, he lifted it up and like, just kind of presented it to the Coast Guard and they immediately started to laugh. <laughs> so anyway, and, and I, you know, they, we talked. Uh, and they said, you're not breaking any law. There's no law here that's being broken. Um, but somebody said there were Cu there was a Cuban refugee raft with people on it heading towards the shore. All right. So, and then they said, oh, by the way, and I think this is, they were just messing with our heads, but it totally worked. They said, we found a lot of lice on these rafts. So since you put those shirts on your back, you might want to de-louse after you. So then you're immediately hyper itchy everywhere. Whether you have lice or not, as soon as somebody tells you that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we, we sailed it towards the beach and we we're talking about it. What are we going to do? And you see all the people there. And I mean, it's like quite literally they've run microphones down onto the sand. It's surreal. Like a movie is occurring. And we said, well, there's. No way we want to get into the surf. Now it's onshore wind and it's blowing a little heavier. There's no way we want to get into that surf on that rusty raft. So we got outside of the surf and um, then we jumped off and paddled our boards in. Well, at that point, so many people charged that raft, swam out to it. They're trying to get stuff off of it, like the life jackets. And the, it just got like pulled to the beach and almost landed on top of somebody because everybody was pulling it into the shore. It was bizarre to see because they easily could have got crushed by that thing. But um, they pulled it up on the beach and then they're grabbing stuff off it. And then the news came up and interviewed us. And <laughs> my, uh, yeah, my friend gave a TV interview about uh, the whole thing. Anyway, so it, it was crazy. And the ending of the story is then because we had so much in our heads at that point that we had been liced. <laughs> Shout out to the Coast Guard for that because that was that's a cool. Um, I doubt that was true. Maybe it was, but it's funny that it really planted a seed in our head, and we couldn't get to CBS quick enough to get the delousing stuff. And we went to a public shower and like deloused. <laughs> And then we went and we actually watched it on the noon and six o'clock news. So that's the whole story of the Cuban rafting. But it taught me a really profound lesson because here's the special part I saved for the end. The way that the news reported it was that we had done this to poke fun at the plight of Cuban Americans. It was like, what? When I saw it, I was like, what? What? We were just surfing. But to them, that was the, you know, the whole kind of reason. So it was just a bizarre realization of how the media works, where they just make stuff up to fit something. And then next thing you know, the story is not just, hey, I saw a Cuban raft, but it's like, this is an evil situation that we should, you know, whatever, because that sells ads. So anyway, yeah, that's the whole story. Thanks for joining the stream there, Eric Lazenby. <laughs> I felt I owed the world this story, and there you have it. Thanks, Flipside Fishing. Yeah, I have a lot of other stories, so if this is the kind of thing people enjoy watching, I'll probably put out some more. This one is particularly bizarre, though, for me. And I, I have the videotape somewhere. I'll have to try to dig it up. It's an old VHS videotape, but I don't have a way to play a VHS videotape. <laughs> but uh, really, ultimately, the story's fine as it is. The interesting thing is the picture that I showed at the, uh, at the beginning of the live stream. I'll show that one again. I'm still getting familiar with this live stream software a bit. But uh, anyway, this picture is very similar to to the look of the Cuban raft that we boarded. 
with that frame like that, but it was much more carefully designed than this. And they had better materials or something and better design, but similar idea, like a pontoon boat, basically. But the pontoons that they had on the one that we boarded was like, they were made for, they were a probably 10 to 12 foot made for boating little pontoon, hard plastic molded formed pontoons. One of the coolest things. Um, I'll tell you that some of the interactions with the uh, people on the beach, like the fire department and uh, the police and so on and so forth, you know, they, they weren't too happy to have to deal with this. And it's kind of like, well, you, you know, you brought this raft to our shores type of thing. And I, you know, it's like a, sorry, I didn't mean to do it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And they were upset that they're going to have to move it off the beach. And I can understand that certainly. But I, I just told them, I think there are plenty of people here that would be willing to put it in their pickup truck up in the parking lot, man. I'm going to ask them, save you a little hassle. Um, yeah. So the other thing was who's accountable for calling the authorities on a false alarm, you know, but, you know, I think it's good exercise, I guess, but you're certainly cost associated with it. I don't know. The boy who cried wolf, ask him. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I, a lot of these rafts went to this bizarre, dystopian kind of uh, graveyard somewhere in Brevard County where they, I, want, I saw a news article, they had many of them, dozens of them just piled up. I think somebody was going to try to make uh, something out, an art or whatever, but the one that we rode was a finely engineered craft. It wasn't built to last 100 years because it was made out of just metal that rusts really quickly, but it was made to cross a freaking monster-infested trench. I'll tell you that much. Holy mackerel. Yeah, to get on a, a raft like that and go across that area of water, which is just filled with man-eating creatures, is pretty gnarly. No doubt about that. I'll tell you, we were only out, you know, a mile or two, and it was clear to me how dangerous the situation was, which is why we jumped on that raft. Rode it in. All right, well, let me know what you think about these streams or if you had any experiences during that period of time that were similar or whatnot. Always interested to know about it. If you're not already subscribed to Surf All Day A1A, please subscribe. Lots of stuff like this coming all the time, expanding into all kinds of new areas. I'm going to start premiering videos now, which means I'll join in on the comments as I release them, answer questions, whatever, get ideas for new videos. It makes it a little bit more interactive. And I finally got my streaming capability figured out. Uh, let me know how you like the quality of this stream, the, vid the video, the voice quality, etc. It took me a little while to build my a situation but i think it's now at a pretty good spot so that's that thanks for watching surf all day a1a have a great day go surfing i know it's only a foot but still